I've created my top 36 rankings and tiers for you today, and we've got a lot to cover, so let's not waste any more time. In Tier 1, Justin Jefferson is up first. Jefferson has over 4,800 receiving yards through his first three seasons and is averaging nearly 100 receiving yards per game. If you think that sounds like a lot, it's because it is. He has an elite floor and ceiling, making him an obvious candidate for the first overall pick in fantasy this year. With Jamar Chase, he suffered a fractured hip last season, which derailed his second year breakout, but when you compare his numbers from 2022 with his rookie season stats, he was on pace to crush those already impressive numbers. I expect him to pick up where he left off last season. If you play in a PPR format and are required to start multiple flexes or more than two wide receivers, then I highly recommend taking these guys at the 1.1 and 1.2 respectively. In Tier 2, I've got two aging superstars, each with their share of red flags. Tyreek Hill is the first guy I want to talk about here. There's a legitimate argument to be made that he could have finished as the wide receiver one last season if Tua hadn't missed time. In spite of the quarterback injuries last season, Tyreek still managed to put up season highs in targets, receptions, and receiving yards, and finishes the wide receiver two. Going into year eight, Tyreek isn't showing any real signs of slowing down as a talent, but with the questions surrounding Tua's ability to stay healthy, he falls outside of tier one consideration for me. The next player in this range is Cooper Cup. Cup played in just nine games last season before suffering a high ankle sprain that required season-ending surgery. However, his quarterback Matthew Stafford has a clean bill of health heading into this season, something that couldn't be said going into 2022. I expect Cup, despite turning 30 years old this past June, to maintain the elite fantasy ceiling we've come to expect from him over the past two seasons. Moving on to Tier 3, I've got Stefan Diggs. Not too much to say here. He's never finished better than wide receiver 3, yet after still averaging nearly 19 fantasy points per game last season, I expect Diggs to remain a mid to high end wide receiver 1 yet again. Up next is CeeDee Lamb. He's steadily improved year after year, and it wouldn't surprise me if he finished better than wide receiver 5, assuming Dak Prescott puts together a fully healthy campaign. A.J. Brown is next on my list. With his first season on the Eagles, Brown finishes the wide receiver 6, and with Jalen Hurts continuing to develop as a passer, I expect big things again from Brown this season. Devontae Adams is the last member this year, and finishing last season as wide receiver 3 put to rest any doubts about whether Devontae Adams needed Aaron Rodgers to be elite in fantasy. With Derek Carr as his quarterback, and even Jarrett Stidham for a couple games late last year, Adams was dominant, averaging just shy of 20 fantasy points per game. Now the only reason he's not higher in this tier is because he's getting another perceived downgraded quarterback with the Raiders signing Jimmy Garoppolo in an effort to replace Derek Carr who joined the Saints. It's not an issue of Adams' talent, it's simply the fact that the guys I have ranked above him all have less significant team changes heading into 2023. Now leading off Tier 4, it's Garrett Wilson. Wilson has the opportunity to take a huge step up in Year 2 following the Jets trading for four-time MVP Aaron Rodgers this past offseason. We saw a lead upside from Wilson as a rookie in 2022, and he would have finished much higher than wide receiver 21 had it not been for Zach Wilson tanking Garrett Wilson's value with each subsequent start at quarterback. By the season's end, I would not be shocked if Garrett Wilson moved up a tier in my rankings. Amon Ross St. Brown is next is my next wide receiver in this tier. After putting together a really solid rookie campaign in 2021, Amon Ross solidified himself as a mid-range wide receiver one, despite playing banged up with an ankle issue for part of last season. With 90 catches as a rookie and 106 last season, Amon Ross' floor makes him a safe mid to low and wide receiver one. The next player on this list is more about the home run plays, and that's Jalen Waddell. With 75 catches, averaging just over 18 yards per catch, Waddle has the game-breaking speed to turn any play into a touchdown. As last season's wide receiver 8, that finish is somewhat misleading as Waddle was boomer bust at times last season, specifically when Tua was inactive. Jalen Waddle would put up single-digit performances that left fantasy managers disappointed. With that being said, he's a volatile wide receiver 1 consideration with a wider range of outcomes than the majority of others on this list. Rounding out this tier, I've got Chris Olave. Olave has a similar case to being in this tier as his college teammate Garrett Wilson, mainly that quarterback, poor quarterback play in their rookie season limited their upside in fantasy. Now Olave will have Derek Carr throwing in the ball this, this season, and I expect the second-year receiver to build off of his wide receiver 25 finish in a big way. He's my wide receiver 12 in this list. All right, so we're a third of the way through this list, and I want to remind you to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. My content is focused around giving you the tools to help win you your fantasy leagues this season. So if you're enjoying the video, leave a like and stay tuned for more content like this. Now back to the tier list. In tier five, we're starting things off with a player you may not be too familiar with if you're new to fantasy football, and that's Calvin Ridley. Now back in 2020, Ridley averaged 18.7 fantasy points per game and finished that year as wide receiver five. Since then, he's dealt with issues both on and off the field, including a one-year suspension for violating the league's gambling policy in 2022. If you haven't read his introspective article entitled The Letter to the Game, 
that he released back in March of this year. I highly recommend it. It gives you his personal insights on where his mindset was back in 2020 and 2021. He speaks candidly about how he struggled with anxiety and depression while navigating the transition to being a professional athlete, and it sounds like he's really grown as a person over the past few years. I'm rooting for him to make a strong comeback, and the situation he finds himself in with Trevor Lawrence as a quarterback gives him a great chance to return to fantasy relevance. T. Higgins is next on my list. His season average was 13.1, but when you remove games where he where Higgins played less than a third of the snaps, his average goes all the way up to 16.6 fantasy points. My point in bringing this up is that when healthy, T. Higgins has wide receiver one upside despite being drafted outside of the top 12 of the position. Another player with similar upside who's going in the same range in drafts is Devonta Smith. Just like with his teammate A.J. Brown, I'm confident in Smith returning on value in fantasy drafts for all the same reasons I've already mentioned. Moving on to Tier 6, I've got Amari Cooper to start things off. Cooper finished as a top 10 fantasy receiver last season for the first time since 2019, matching his season high in targets with 132, while setting a new season best at 9 receiving touchdowns. If you haven't watched my quarterback rankings and tiers video at the, on the channel yet, I definitely recommend doing so. But if you have, you'll remember that I ranked Deshaun Watson as my QB9 with the thought in mind that he's more likely to return to fantasy relevance than not. With Watson's success, I believe Amari Cooper will be the primary benefactor as his top receiver. Wide receiver 16 may end up being too low for Cooper this season. Speaking of wide receiver 16, that's where our next player finished last season. We're talking about DK Metcalf next. Entering year 5, DK has developed into a higher volume receiver while also decreasing in yards per catch. Season highs in both targets and catches last year make DK a safer option in PPR formats than previous seasons, but his touchdown stat took a pretty significant step down with Geno Smith as his quarterback, going from 12 in 2021 to 6 in 2022. That being said, DK is still a strong wide receiver too, with the upside for the occasional spike week. Entering his age 31 season, DeAndre Hopkins is next in this tier. After serving a six-game suspension to start last season, Nuke immediately reminded fantasy managers that he's still the dominant receiver we've come to expect over his 10-year career. My concern is with the team he chose to sign with, though. The same team that saw A.J. Brown finishing as a fringe wide receiver too more often than not, albeit while having difficulty staying healthy. My concern with Nuke this season is surrounding his upside in this offense given his age. I've got him ranked as a mid-wide receiver too, despite the fact that Nuke has just two healthy seasons where he finished worse than wide receiver 14 on a points-per-game basis. Father time is undefeated, and Tennessee has developed a reputation for signing washed-up veterans at the end of their career. See Julio Jones and Robert Woods. Debo Samuel is my next guy on this list. Injuries really hurt Debo's season last year, but I think between usage and target competition on the 49ers that it's more likely Debo will finish closer to wide receiver 20 than wide receiver 3 like he did in 2021 when he was operating as both wide receiver 1 and RB1 for San Francisco. Similar to DeAndre Hopkins, we've got another 31-year-old cracking my top 20, and that's Keenan Allen. Since 2017, Allen has been the picture of consistency at the wide receiver position, with four of his last six seasons finishing as a top 12 fantasy wide receiver, catching at least 100 passes and scoring six or more touchdowns. Last season was not quite up to the standard we've come to expect from Allen, but he only played 10 games. While I do think Allen's days as a wide receiver one are behind him, I believe Justin Herbert will bounce back this year and help Allen finish as a strong wide receiver two in his 11th season as a charger. Now at 21, can you do something for me? Hear me out, because I'm going with Chris Godwin here. I might be overcorrecting for my analysis on the Seahawks pass catchers last season, but I'm betting on these Buccaneer receivers to beat the allegations that Baker Mayfield is going to tank their value in fantasy. Chris Godwin hasn't had a fully healthy season since 2018, and in spite of that, he's finished as high as wide receiver 2 in 2019, with old crab legs Jameis Winston as his quarterback, and his worst season finish in that time span was wide receiver 31 when he played 12 games with Tom Brady in 2020. With season finishes of wide receiver 16 and 19 over the previous two seasons, Godwin has the talent to overcome poor quarterback play, and for that reason, I'm ranking him here heading into 2023. Jared Judy is next on this list at 22. Coincidentally, where he finished last season. With a hamstring injury suffered in training camp, Judy is expected to miss several weeks. I originally had Judy in Tier 6 ahead of Keenan Allen, but this hamstring issue has the potential to linger beyond Week 1 of the NFL season, and so in response, I have to knock him down a few spots here. Next up is Drake London. Over the past five games of 2022, London averaged just under 10 targets per game and right around 85 yards per contest. With the addition of first-round pick B. John Robinson and Desmond Ritter entering year two, there's a lot of potential on this young Atlanta offense. London finished 
London finishing last season as wide receiver 31, despite Atlanta ranking 31st in pass attempts, leads me to believe that if the Falcons can improve in this category, London and Pitts will each take a significant step up in fantasy this season. Now, I mentioned Atlanta ranking 31st in pass attempts last season, but this player joins the team that took the honor of ranking last, and that's DJ Moore on the Chicago Bears. Moore has been a consistent factor in fantasy football in spite of horrible quarterback play through his first five seasons with the Panthers. Excluding his rookie season, Moore has finished as wide receiver 24 or better four consecutive seasons. I do expect Justin Fields to take another step in his evolution as a passer heading into year three, and having DJ Moore will mark a huge improvement being the best receiver Fields has played within the NFL thus far. I'm going back to the well for this one, and I'm ranking Mike Evans at 25 on this list. Evans has one season in his nine-year career with a fantasy finish outside of the top 20 at wide receiver. He was wide receiver 22 all the way back in 2015. But this guy prints 1,000-yard seasons. 25 feels low for Evans, and barring injury, I'm going to sit here and tell you that I will be genuinely shocked if he doesn't go 10 for 10 and finish 2023 with another 1,000-yard season. I told you I'm not counting these Buccaneer receivers out this year. Christian Watson is a low-end wide receiver, too, for me on this list. We saw explosive playmaking ability from him last season as a rookie, but now he's going from catching passes from Aaron Rodgers to Jordan Love as his quarterback. The uncertainty surrounding how this offense responds to that change keeps Watson lower on this list for me. Brandon Ayuk was able to capitalize on the absence of Debo Samuel for part of last season, finishing his wide receiver 15. I believe this finish was more related to an uptick in target volume rather than Ayuk breaking out in year 3. When you consider how he hadn't finished better than wide receiver 35 before last season, it's more likely he takes a step back with Debo being back to fully involved in the offense and finishes closer to being a wide receiver, a fringe wide receiver 2 rather than a top 20 scorer at the position. Terry McLaurin is next in this tier. Admittedly coming off of his best season, I might be overreacting to the latest news on McLaurin's health concerns in addition to the uncertainty in quarterback, but his track record as a pro has me less than convinced that last year won't end up looking like a fluke when it's all said and done. I personally don't believe in Sam Howell being the answer at quarterback in Washington, and the fact that Jacoby Brissett is waiting in the wings there does give me some hope for McLaurin later in the season if he were to take over the starting job. However, this recent development of turf toe for McLaurin is something I think he's going to struggle with early on this year. McLaurin has historically been a fringe wide receiver too through his first four seasons in the NFL, and I'm not saying his value is going to fall off a cliff. He wouldn't be in this list if I thought that. All I'm saying is that McLaurin may be a frustrating player to roster if you expect him to be your wide receiver too. In Tier 8, Arquise Brown leads things off. Prior to his broken foot suffered in last October, Hollywood was averaging 10.5 targets and around 81 receiving yards per game. At just 26 years old, Hollywood still has a lot of tread left on the tires. While we can't expect Kyler Murray to be the starting quarterback by week one, at least as of this recording, we can't expect Hollywood to command a significant portion of the target market share in Arizona to the point where even if it's inefficient, Hollywood will be fantasy relevant off receiving volume alone. Once Kyler Murray is back healthy, Hollywood could easily make a case to move up at least one tier on this list. Next up is the former Cardinal Christian Kirk. Kirk now has much stronger target competition with the addition of Calvin Ridley, and Evan Ingram could likely be more involved in the early portion of this season compared to 2022. As Jacksonville's leading receiver, Kirk finished the season as wide receiver 11, so the ceiling is there if Ridley ends up flopping. I don't personally expect that to happen, but it is worth mentioning that Kirk has serious potential to rise in the ranks if his situation changes. Tyler Lockett at 31 feels so low to me, but I think this is a great example of how deep the wide receiver position is for fantasy football. Lockett hasn't finished worse than wide receiver 17 since 2018, but he's going to be turning 31 years old at the end of September, and rookie first-rounder Jackson Smith and Jigba comps better to him than he does DK. So I could re- I could see a reality where JSN starts eating into Lockett's target share by midseason, if not sooner, depending on the rookie's recovery from wrist surgery. Mike Williams is another example of a player with a pretty wide range of outcomes this season. He struggled to stay on the field at times in 2022, and while his yards per catch were the lowest of his career since his rookie season in 2017, this is a player with only two of his six seasons finishing with more than 50 catches. He'll be 29 years old this October, and I believe the Chargers just drafted his replacement in first-rounder Quentin Johnston. I'm not convinced Williams will maintain the relatively improved volume we've seen from him over the last two seasons if Johnston impresses as a rookie. For the final tier, I'm going to start with Deontay Johnson. 
Obviously, scoring zero touchdowns last season hurt his overall ranking in fantasy. And call me crazy, but I do expect touchdown regression in a positive sense when it comes to Johnson. Historically, he's been a fringe wide receiver too, so if anything, I think you're drafting Johnson at a discount this season, which is great. His career best finish was wide receiver 8 in 2021, so we know he's capable of a lot more than he was able to show with rookie quarterback Kenny Pickett. Speaking of, I definitely expect Pickett to show improvement in his second season and should help Johnson return value in drafts as well. Michael Pittman hasn't had the best of luck when it comes to quarterback play thus far in his career. Phillip Rivers at the end of his career in 2020, Carson Wentz near the end of his career in 2021, and Matt Ryan slash Sam Ellinger in 2022. With that being said, Pittman has one final year on his rookie contract with the Colts, so unless they extend him this offseason, he may not have to deal with poor quarterback play for much longer. However, that doesn't help us as fantasy managers this season. I've got Pittman just inside my top 36 rankings at the position, largely because I don't think he's a bad player. I talked about Anthony Richardson likely taking after other rookie quarterbacks who came into the NFL with accuracy concerns, and because of that, I'm low on Pittman going into 2023. He has the talent to deliver on the random spike week occasionally this season, but you'll be hard-pressed to see any form of consistency from Pittman based on my projections for his quarterback. Next up is the rookie, also out of USC, Jordan Addison. And this kid's got blazing speed on and off the field, but in all seriousness, I love his opportunity getting drafted to Minnesota. He's going to be running routes opposite of arguably the best wide receiver in the league, and I'm not talking about K.J. Osborne, who's currently listed ahead of Addison on the depth chart. With the departure of Adam Thielen, who we saw up until last season have serious value on this offense, Addison has the opportunity to be the wide receiver two on the offense that ranked third in the NFL last season in pass attempts per game. If Addison can stay out of trouble and work his way up the depth chart, we could see him finish as a wide receiver two in fantasy. Prior to the news about Jackson Smith the Jigba needing surgery on his wrist, I did have him ranked ahead of Addison on this list, but with that in mind, he still makes my top 36 rankings for similar reasons. Earlier, I talked about how I was lower on Tyler Lockett this season due to his age and similar skill sets as JSN. Well, nothing's changed since I said that a couple of minutes ago, so I'll just reiterate how I anticipate JSN eating into Lockett's role on this offense by midseason or sooner, depending on how the recovery from surgery goes for the rookie. Well, that's going to conclude my top 36 wide receiver rankings and tiers. I hope you enjoyed the video, learned a few things, and remember to subscribe for more fantasy football content like this. Until next time, bye-bye.